Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War, our allied let's play of this game. Uh, in today's episode, we're returning to the Western Front uh, pre-German invasion of France. In our last episode, uh, we kind of fought the phony war in France, basically reinforcing troops and getting ready for the eventual German onslaught. Poland has fallen. The Germans have not yet gone for Denmark or Norway, although I would expect that would be soon. The Winter War is being fought by the Russians, and uh, that's the situation right now on the uh, European theater. Nothing really going on in North Africa to this point. Um, we have moved some troops ready to deal with Ethiopia when Italy declares war, and we have moved the fleet into position to attack Taranto and the Italian fleet as soon as war is declared against the Italians. With that being said, that's the current situation, and we will see how things play out as we move into the second half of February uh, in this turn. The British celebrate the capture of the Altamark in Norwegian waters. So we captured um, a German iron ore ship or something. Um, actually, it might have been a commerce raider. French national morale falls as positions in the Mediterranean are abandoned. What? Mussolini encouraged by weakening Allied presence in the Mediterranean. I thought... Ugh. All right, well, so that's kind of a mistake on my part. I pulled one of our units out of Tunis because I was under the impression that we could. I thought we just had to keep troops in Algeria and Damascus, but apparently I'm wrong. And we'll see if Italy declares war early then because of that, uh, or if France falls or whatever. I don't know. National morale is a, is a bad thing to lose as the French, though. They lose a lot of it, and uh, it's hard to recover, so we'll see how big of a detriment that is where is that ship coming from german cruiser just came up from behind our blockading fleet meanwhile the germans uh air force has begun bombarding the uh french positions here in in well uh the low countries region so they may be getting ready for a spring offensive or maybe even a winter offensive that would be a little bit early i think they'll probably go to norway next but meanwhile the japanese are continuing their offensives in china they actually have lost a fair number of troops there. We just destroyed a headquarters unit in China last turn. Um, so it's interesting to see that a lot of their troops are not actually reinforcing. But continuing to attack. They're kind of mixing reinforcing with attacking, though. You can see there's some carriers are attacking our infantry. I feel like their carriers have been much more effective against infantry than ours were at this stage in the war. German armor moving to the front near Metz. The hinge in our line. French national morale falls as positions of the Mediterranean are abandoned. Really? A coal strike in uh, New South Wales paralyzes the Australian economy. That's... is a str Whatever. I haven't even moved my forces in Australia yet. Okay. So the question is, how much did our morale fall? Meanwhile, the Min British Minister of Defense Intelligence reports increasing Japanese naval th activity in the Pacific, and there are some concerns that our naval bases at Singapore may be inadequate should the war expand in this theater. Would you like to mobilize Malaya so we can invest in expanding the port and naval defenses at Singapore at a cost of 200 MPPs? Sure. Malaya prepares for war. Uh, Second Corps, Port St. Elizabeth. All right, we'll put them on transports. Meanwhile, a French heavy cruiser is arriving. I want to know how much the uh, French morale fell. Looks like it dropped maybe 5% because of that. So the Germans will probably begin their offensive next turn. French have no money. Joy. Just enough money for those guys to not get fully reinforced. Uh, the British, can we upgrade our fighters slightly? Yes, we can. So we'll get them up to Spitfires from Hurricanes. All right, let's try and bomb these guys. We'll have to deal with some interceptors, but we've got escorts. Level 1 fighter escorts, too. So they should be reasonably good. Knock out some of the German supply. Maybe we can go ahead and hit them with some tactical bomb. Oh, wait, they're, they're strategic bombers. I forgot about that. So we can eat up two of the German interceptors. Ooh, we lost heavily there. Kill some of their supply on their units that are, oh god, five? Really? 
So we don't have escorts or something? Eesh. 03, 03. I don't want to just throw units away. I also don't want to change them into the naval. Did we ever even move our engineers to the front? We did not. Um, I don't even know, like, can I fortify here? We'll have to wait and see. All right, um, would have been nice to extend the Maginot line, but I don't think I'm going to have time for that. Uh, all right, so meanwhile, German cruiser in our rear. We'll send a sub after it. We'll send her. Wait, no! God damn it. Set cap mode. Really, they got hit with a 7? That seems a, a little excessive of a penalty. In any event, we'll finish them off. There you go. German Navy dealt a bit of a blow. Our battleships and subs back into position. And there you have it. One of the German vessels destroyed. One of the few vessels that had to be at sea before the, the war even started. All right, so... Italy's preparing for war, that's fine. Because we are going to just bonsai them the second war breaks out. We'll lead with the French ships first. I think that's where the bulk of their forces are. Obviously, we'll find out to some extent. Reinforce these guys in Cartorum. All right, so we're almost ready to move there. These new troops that were just risen, risen, that just rose in South Africa will need to be increased in strength and sent on transports. But I think that does it for the war here. The Americans don't have enough to invest in technology. The British, I just spent some of that stuff, so probably not. Although research for the Indian forces is probably a good idea. Or are they Canadian? I'm not sure. Let's research infantry weapons, though. Okay, meanwhile, moving to China, we'll reinforce these guys. Um... Meanwhile, in the south of China, see this one unit's down to four strength. Yeah, I'm not going to have the strength to uh, deal with these guys, so I think we're just going to have to hold off on attacking there. Just spent most of my Chinese money reinforcing troops. But that's fine. We'll attack their headquarters unit there. Okay, did some damage to a Japanese headquarters unit. Then we can attack this Japanese air unit. Can we pull back? Nice, we can. So we're able to advance and then immediately retreat. I think we'll do the same thing here. 
if we can. Nice. All right, so we weren't able to pull this guy back, which may matter or it may not. I'm not really sure. Move this army unit over here to make sure we don't fill, we don't have a, a gap in our line. Probably shouldn't have advanced there. That's going to expose us. These guys all already moved. This guy over here. Well, we drove him back. We didn't actually... Meanwhile, we fell back from Pakhoi. We'll let them retake the city. It's already fortifying there. Could try and cut them off. Drive deep into China there. All right, um, I think that's going to do it for this turn, so we'll move forward to the next one. I've got not quite enough money for any of the other units to invest. Russia, I know you guys mentioned it's a bad idea to defend on the front line just because you get massive penalties to you know your ability to fight on day one. I'm just not sure where to defend from. Like, What's the right front line? Probably should move some of these guys back. I don't really care about Murmansk or anything up there. So I think what we'll do is we'll have these armies pull back. Maybe establish a line from Leningrad south or Novograd through the Denmesk and then down through Smolensk. Make our line at Smolensk. I still think we also need to defend at Kiev. Wish I could move those ships out of, out of there and into the... Okay, so these two will move here and here. We need two more units to link up there. All right. So we're repositioning some of our Soviet forces. We've got some against Japan too, which we may need to move probably just be easier if we move all of the troops south so we can get a good sense of like how thick that line is because it's a long ass frontier we'll probably leave the garrisons and the various forts on the border though Move this garrison unit here because only one unit can attack it from its current location. So even though it's on the front line, it's not in as valuable a position. Okay. The guys in the forts on the front lines will remain where they are. These anti-aircraft guns will move a little bit. But yeah, we're going to need to buy more troops, too, as the Russians. Are they cheaper, maybe, for the Russians? Not really. I need more money. All right, well, that's fine. The Russians still have, like, a year until their war is going to start. So let's go ahead and end the turn. We're going to move into uh, 
April, I guess. The Red Army's offensive is thwarted as the Finns are reinforced by Britain and France. Okay, so the reinforcement event triggered, and French and British morale is boosted by the success of the expedition to Finland. Uh, French morale falls. Uh, do I have to really move the troops back? Frustrated by Ang Anglo-French interference, Finland. Stalin grows colder to the west. Rival Anglo-French support against the USSR moves Finland closer to the Allies. So the way I understand it is this basically means that it's almost almost assured that Finland won't join the Germans, which means we'll have two of those armies on the border there that we can pull back and face against the Germans um, with a narrower front. Uh, so that'll be exciting. Okay. Germany declares war on the Netherlands. All right, well, the invasion of... Uh, the invasion of France is going to start here without even an invasion of Norway. I'm kind of confused by that. They're just going straight against the low countries. I wasn't really ready for that, but I guess it's happening. It's an interesting decision by the AI. Meanwhile, the southern Chinese offensive, some Japanese troops are pulling back. German Air Forces moving against the Dutch primarily in this turn so far. Ooh, they nearly destroyed that army unit and then drove it back. I really hope they didn't, uh, don't die. Don't attack him again. All right, so the Germans are moving primarily against the Dutch this turn. You can see here they're moving strongly against Amsterdam. They are moving some troops against the Belgians as well. Shit. Armor trying to get in behind uh, the Dutch at Brussels. Where did those paratroopers land? Jesus Christ! Paratroopers in arrear! They didn't take any casualties despite me having all of those uh, air, air units nearby? Well, shit. That caught me by surprise, that's for sure. Now, the interesting thing is they're in the rear of the Maginot Line, but they're not attacking the Maginot Line, so I've got two armies and a corps that are adjacent to them. I could just turn around and fight against them. They're probably going to be cut off and fighting with limited supply. French national morale falls as positions in the Mediterranean are abandoned. Luxembourg surrenders. Belgian Congo prepares for war. Belgian Congo joins the Allies. Malaya joins the Allies. RA is bombing us. Jerks. Well, the invasion of France was a little premature. We're in a march of 40. We lost one fighter unit, a Dutch army unit, and a Dutch light cruiser. Given the grave situation on the continent and need to maintain morale at home, it is strongly urged that we improve the forces we have to defend the United Kingdom from invasions. There's now tens of thousands of enthusiastic local defense volunteers preparing to sell their lives dearly should the Germans invade. With little investment in their training and equipment, we could turn the, them into an efficient fighting force capable of taking a heavy toll on any German foolish enough to land. Winston Churchill has also suggested renaming them as the Home Guard. Okay. Yeah. Why would I not say yes? Like that, that doesn't make sense. A thousand morale points if we say yes. Okay. Yes, please. Um. All right. Let's see here. Yeah. These German paratroopers for, for, I mean, they did, it does suck that they destroyed the units they did. But, uh, I mean, obviously I'm going to go after him. Okay. Not 
Nice. We got some Dutch interceptors there helping us out. All right, so we shattered that German unit. All right, their entrenchment's only three out of six, but they are British and they do have level one equipment. So, all right, so we got that German unit. Um... I'm going to kind of tre keep trying to bomb them. Maybe hurt their supply. Maybe we can interfere or interdict with some of their some of their stuff. We have more interceptors to aid us now, be they Belgian or Dutch or French fighters. Okay. God damn, I don't know. I can't seem to do anything against these guys. Like, if I do this, it says 5 to 1. Like, what's the point of that, then? I need to save some money to get some of these guys out via transport. Yes, I'm already planning to abandon France. All right, we'll go for this armor. Do a little bit of damage to it. There we go, two. So I lost six of my strength, but I'm okay with the result. All right, so France. Like, whose reinforcements does this pull into? Is it the French? The French reinforcement pool is for the uh, Belgians and the Dutch. I mean, that explains why they would be not as, it's not as tenable a position, I guess. In any event, we reinforce the Dutch, or the Belgian First Corps and First Army. We definitely can't attack these German tanks. Desfo show. Let's bring our fleet down here a little bit. Weather won't let me bombard them, will it? Oh, I can get in there. Short range though. Looks like we're gonna take some damage from enemy fighters. Do a little bit of damage to their fighters, too, though. Okay. Maybe we can hurt the morale a little bit, make them slightly less effective fighters. Bombard them from the coast. We've hurt one of their units' morale a little bit. Their morale is a 122? That's nuts. Come on, the whole British Ar Navy is bombarding you guys, and your morale is just totally fine. You're just like, whatever. By the way, what did I do to those ships that were sailing south? The Italians got to be like declaring war soon, right? All right, let's move these ships north because there's really no reason for them to be there all the way down in the south. 
Okay, so I think that does it for Europe today. Britain still has a bit of money. Um, we'll probably need some of that to help pull guys out. We'll use some of that on advanced fighters. Uh, the U.S. actually has research available to it as well. Advanced tanks, I think. The um, Russians were moving around. Those guys to Kiev, these guys to Cherneski. Did we say Smolensk was our defensive line, or should we use this forest here just east of the Pripyat marshes? Also, I'm pretty confident we can pull these troops back from the uh, Leningrad front. Not 100% sure of that, but I do think that's true. Alright. So... The question is, do we want to swing west toward Minsk, or do we want to bend back toward... Smolensk? It'd really save us on some units if we just moved it north toward... I feel like we'd actually be better off if we place these units one hex back. Sort of behind this river. I don't know if that actually makes it a more defensible position or not. It certainly should if we defend behind this river line. Rather than in front of the river line. Problem is that's going to add a whole bunch of... additional hexes in frontage. But if we swing these guys around this river, this is a nice little defensive front all the way north to north of uh, Smolensk. This river travels this hole away. So maybe we'll do that. It just adds a lot of weird shapes in our line. Obviously, we don't have anywhere near enough troops. Um... All right, there's not much else we can do on the border with here. I think we might try and pull back over there with those troops. All right, so there's that. Research, movement, all that stuff's done probably for Britain this turn. Just waiting on the Italians to jump into the war. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Chinese front. First things first, reinforce this army. Okay. we not do anything versus those guys? I guess it is an army. All right, move those guys forward, move this guy back here. All right, we'll see if they try and cut our troops off, because I am trying to work our way in around behind their forces at Canton. See if we can... Well, I guess Hong Kong isn't even their base of supply, so this theoretically would cut their rail line. Just be a matter of whether they get supply from uh, Canton or not. It is a port city, so they probably do. All right, pull this guy back. There's no reason to maintain that fort of a position. Pull him back, we'll move this guy 
forward. Mm. Move him here. All right, so we can... I can't move him up there. All right, so we'll move those guys around. Dig in him, dig in him. Okay, mostly just reinforcing in China this turn. We have isolated two Japanese forces in the south, um, but they do have supply here. The secondary supply will be provided, I think. Um, and we'll see if we can maybe reduce the core at Canton. If we can take Canton, then we can destroy this other army for sure um, and kind of whittle them down a little bit. But I think that's going to do it for this turn. The invasion of France is underway. Um, the Germans are... I mean, more or less insurmountable for our forces here. We did manage to destroy that Jap that German airborne unit, though, so that'll be nice from like a morale perspective. Okay. I think we've still got them bottled up here in the North Sea. Move this Dutch destroyer back a little bit. Be interesting to see if they go after this carrier too, the Glorious, or if we trigger the Norway event, because I'm not sure if we will or not based off of uh, what's going on. That being said, guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in for one, another one, and we'll see if Italy joins the fray in our next one. Until next time, though, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.